October 7th, 2010. It's their own money. They could do what they want with it. I guess if one guy spends 40 million and the other guy spends 5 million, maybe that might have a difference, but uh, make an opinion, but it's their money and then, you know, it's what they can do with it. Good evening. Welcome to an RLTV special report. Prime Votes, the election 2010 news desk. I'm Sam Donaldson, along with my fellow reporter and good friend, John Palmer. Thank you, Sam. Well, the price tags are amazing. In New York, Carl Palladino says that he's willing to put down $10 million. Linda McMahon has already spent an estimated $22 million in the state of Connecticut. Rick Scott, an estimated $40 million in Florida, and dwarfing all of the others, former eBay CEO Meg Whitman. She has spent and is spending at least $120 million in California. Well, are they simply trying to buy these elections, Sam? Well, one of the oldest sayings in politics is money is the mother's milk of politics. And it's also so true today with all of the expenses, television, for instance, that you have to have a lot of money if you're not known to get known. And even if you are known, you can dwarf an opponent who isn't financially able to match you with television ads and other types of spending, which just get you in, whereas all things being equal, meaning same amount of money, mm -hmm. you might not win. Yeah, and there have been a lot of cases of people didn't win who put in a lot of money there. I always think one of my favorite stories was the West Virginia primary, which we remember when JFK is against Hubert Humphrey and uh, his father, old Joe Kennedy, you know, put up a lot of money for uh, JFK's campaign and apparently got a phone call from his son saying, Dad, we need some more money down here in West Virginia. And he said, son, I'm willing to, to pay for a victory, but not a landslide. And that one more vote than you need. Now, there are exceptions throughout our history. Uh, there was a senator from Wisconsin named Bill Proxmire. Mm -hmm. And uh, frequently he ran for re-election. He was so popular by spending the filing fee plus about a hundred or two dollars. And that was it. But I think those days are gone forever. And yet you see already in this election landscape that even someone like Meg Whitman, who's the biggest spender to date at the moment, yes, of anybody. gets in trouble because of an issue, and money may not be able to save her. That's true, and of course that issue is the nanny problem. That's right, and as I, I keep coming back to the idea that there are other things, there are other factors that can uh, impact the race. Rick Scott in Florida put a lot of money into his campaign. He was asked the other day about a million dollar check. Did you write that check? Well, he said, I can't remember. Now, there's nothing wrong with that, except a lot of people think if you write a check for a million dollars, you can't remember. It's just a little too elite. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And Paladino, I think, is a very interesting race. Uh, Cuomo is, is, is way ahead in that governor's race right now, but Paladino has come on. He, he's a colorful guy. He's very angry. We've seen the YouTube clip where he was angry with a reporter. He travels the state with his uh, bulldog, Duke. Uh, he's an angry man, like a lot of the voters are angry, and I think he's playing very much into that. Well, that's true. Uh, money is so important, and the Supreme Court has made it much easier now for big money to get in. As you know, and we've based this particular program on the idea that if it's your own money, you can spend any amount, any, anything you want to, sky's the limit. But now the court has decided that corporations cannot contribute directly to someone's campaign, but they can spend any amount of money they want to advertising against you or for you as a candidate. That's there something are, new. There are so many loopholes in this. Uh, but a lot of other countries look at the United States and, and, and they feel very strongly, A, that our campaigns go along far too long, and, uh, and two, that wealthy people can do very well in, in, in our elections, despite the fact there have been a handful of people who have done very well. It's a great advantage, as you said, to, with the television aspects of it, that is so expensive, and it's a great advantage for these people, and, and there are more and more millionaires and billionaires uh, joining the political races. Mm -hmm. Well, that's all the time we have for tonight, and we'll be back every weekday evening right through Election Day with the news and analysis you need to make these very important choices. Join us tomorrow night when we'll examine the wild and woolly race for the Senate in Florida. Three candidates, and all of them wild cards. I'm Sam Donaldson. And I'm John Palmer. Have a good evening. Yeah.